can see you there. Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood sax man Alex here. As you can see, I went a little bit festive. Me and my wife put together this little presentation for our holiday series and the rest of the year. We finally got our Christmas tree and we are Xmasing it up. We got our fancy little wreath here behind my beautiful saxophone. Little key leaves that add to the ambiance of the greenery. And of course, this lovely garland. And not my typical espresso cup. In a previous video, we were talking about how to warm up on a saxophone before you practice. We centered on the mouth, but now I want to talk about finger exercises that'll help you loosen up and get ready for the rest of the practice session. Our hands, and more importantly, our fingers, are a very important and crucial part of our saxophonist careers. Our fingers are what make the notes change in the saxophone. Pushing down on the buttons and the pearls and the spatula keys and the knuckle keys and the palm keys and whatnot. They're very important to us and we need to treat them with the tender loving care that they deserve. TLC. Our hands are very versatile and at times very strong. For those saxophonists that work on their pinky fingers on exercises that require a lot of pinky strength, flex. And when it comes to playing the saxophone, it is crucial to know and understand what to do and what not to do when practicing. I'm sure many of you have experienced your teachers telling you to put your hands on the saxophone a certain way so that you wouldn't stress out the tendons on your hands. First go like this, spin around, stop, double take three times. I've heard many horror stories of a lot of students of mine where they would have to go away from the horn for at least a month because they were not holding the saxophone right and it damaged the tendons so much that they got carpal tunnel that they just had to relax and rest the hand for an extended amount of time which really hindered their career this is a fear that passes through my mind every single day even if i feel the slightest bit of pain in my hand or in my tendons or in my wrists I stop immediately and I make sure what the problem is and to make sure that if whatever I was practicing was causing that problem that I never do it again or I make sure that if I'm going to do it again that I'm very conscious and make sure that I'm holding the sacks the right way and I'm not stressing the hand in an unnecessary way. Before you get into any heavy exercise on the fingers aka scales, finger busters, etc. We need to first stretch the hands. Make sure they're loose. Make sure that if there's already any pain before you practice that you address the problem and talk to your doctor, get it checked out, and make sure that it's not an underlying bigger problem. Now, if your hands are all fine, you've stretched and everything is okay, I'm gonna show you some tips to help you warm up on your fingers so that you're smooth sailing for the rest of the practice session. So I'll show you two exercises that I do to help myself warm up my hands. So sit back, relax, and I'll see you in a bit. The first exercise I do is going up and down chromatically starting on our low D. So I start with a minor third chromatically going up and down, then all the way up to the octave going up and down. I don't want to do this too fast because then it will stretch out the tendons. Just start it slow and then when you feel like you're starting to get a little bit more loose, speed up according to how much you can go. Don't stress it out too much. <laughs> It's a bit of a workout on the air support as well because you're trying to maintain a nice even tone throughout all the notes. But it's very nice that you can start it slow and gradually speed up as you get more comfortable going through the chromatic scale going up and each interval. The next exercise involves a really nice and easy pattern movement of a scale going from high C down to your low C. It's just an easy pattern movement to get yourself more accustomed with your brain and coordination with your hands. <laughs> If you're feeling dangerous, take it up a half step, do it in all 12 keys, 
But I would just stick to C because as long as you're doing the exercise and getting your brain used to the coordination, you're doing a good job of making a healthy transition into harder exercises. All in all, there's a plethora of different exercises that you can do, but these are the two that I choose when I'm warming up, whether it be for a recording session or before a practice session or whatever it may be. And I'll leave you with it. <laughs>